we started as a landscape architecture firm mm -hmm. and we still are very strong in terms of landscape architecture. Uh, always been interested, let's say, in the fringe or, or borders of the profession towards our other fields. So we've always been trying to sneak into art, to sneak into urban design, to sneak into architecture. So we always kind of... Um, and, and, and recently we are also doing buildings. Mm -hmm. That's like two years ago that we started to also work uh, in architecture, expanding the field, exactly. expanding the ego. Yeah, that's uh, what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, I think I would say if, if I would have to characterize our firm, I would say really the, the diversity in, in, in the mass sense. So we are not, I think, I don't know if it's good or bad, but that's mm -hmm. what we are. We really try, we, th we don't try to um, focus on one thing and do just that, but to try and arrow in as many things as we can, actually. Mm -hmm. We seem to be to need stories, you know? And the stories also, uh, the, what was my point is to say, the stories are created, they're invented mm -hmm. in the end. So we invent them because we need them, because we want to be connected to our roots, our past, to, create a base for our future, etc, etc. No? In terms of Latin America, I must say, I left Argentina when I was 13 years old, so, okay, so I do like, I do look very Latin and I do act very Latin, but I'm totally German, Latin. and I'm totally German. <laughs> Inside me, I'm purely blonde. Okay. <laughs> so, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I have uh, a Jewish, on my father's side, Jewish, German, Lithuanian ancestors, they came to Argentina, and on my mother's, they're from Spain, so all the story of my family, is like a, 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 a in the last centuries uh, a reflection of your work in a way. In the end, yes. yes. So, and I think I met also with Superkin. I met a, a project in which I could also implement my own personal experience in terms of being an immigrant myself. So, having to have gone through this process of adaptation, still keep, uh, keeping your own life. What means it to keep your identity? What means it to take some of what you meet? You know, how much you give, how much you take how it creates something new that is just you in difference to anyone else, you know, and all these questions are things that, oh, that maybe every human has in the process of aging or whatever, but as an immigrant you have them maybe as some a bit stronger or more direct or more clear because of these uh, cultural clashes and, um, and, but for me in the end it's a positive experience and a positive, and something deeply human in terms of the chance of changing us, so the chance of becoming someone that you want to be and, and, and or, or you try to be or whatever. Culture is actually cultivating conflicts, it's not avoiding and trying to harmonize problems but uh, showing how you can live with them in a good way and how the problem actually is, the, is part of your identity, you know. Yeah. And in, in public space and also in terms of urban design and architecture, we have been pacifying and harmonizing too much in the end. For me, the spaces I'm interested in mostly are spaces of social encounter. And so how do you create social encounter? And also how do you create, let's say, that you don't stick to your own kind, mm -hmm. that you really encounter something you are surprised by, yeah. okay? And, uh, and if we do not uh, provide, let's say, new instruments for encounter, uh, people seclude, you know? And then, so you, we have to find where the moment is that even we are super different, we find each other attractive. So the box ring, for example, is an example of that. So on one side is super redneck, on the other side is super attractive and sexy, you know. So, uh, and, and this maybe combines again, let's say the bourgeois or the, or the whatever with, the, let's say, a culture that maybe doesn't have the education or whatever. So how to create moments and devices that actually connect different classes, different sexes, different interests, you know, to really have the surprising encounters that I think are, and this is what cities are. Good cities are about uh, accidental encounters. You know, that you never have thought I would, you would meet someone like that. That's the only reason to live so and, and so close to each other. That you can, and that's also what produces creativity. If you go to New York, if you go to many places, the tension between the bad and the good is what is really cool about places. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they become super boring suburbs or or mega dangerous places that that's are right. just about crime. So, but to find a good balance where the whole human nature somehow can express itself and use, let's say, negative force for positive purpose mm -hmm. and the other way around, I don't know. This is what I think we should maybe take more in consideration when, we, when it comes to public space.
Well, I believe in terms of climate change, I must say, I do not believe in many things that have been said in this conference that for me were far too uh, romantic, romanticizing a certain humbleness mm -hmm. of dealing with nature that has a lot to do with the past. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can go back there. I think that we have to learn how to openly uh, uh, confront the conflicts we are and create new cultures, new cultivations that actually take in consideration that we're ruining our, the source of our life. Mm -hmm. So quite simple, without any romantic uh, background. You know. How you do it, I think there are a lot of people thinking about it. If the profession of landscape architects is relevant in that, I would say not at all. I mean, I think it was a pretty political conference, but it's nice, mm -hmm. because usually we're a pretty apolitical field, so I think it was kind of nice, I like that, the chance to outspeak and open speak, so I like the president speaking about the diversity and gay marriage, etc. I thought it was really cool, mm -hmm. I thought it was, wow, I like that, I didn't expect that to happen. On the other side, but this is also part of your DNA here, you know, all, I think that um, the misuse of the original story is a kind of a second colonization, having them dance on the stage I thought was super disrespectful and I don't know, it's also treating them, I thought the last presentation was interesting because he was talking about subject and object mm -hmm. and I think you still treat the Aboriginal people like objects and not like people. So that before you were mean to the object, now you're nice to the object, but they remain kind of secluded from, from whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that I, but it's interesting to see how you are struggling with that, what is good because it's part of your history and it's good that um, but I think it needs to get into another level of uh, a much more honest way of um, of dealing with the subject. So I think I mean this is maybe another problem of the profession that instead of focusing on what we can do, producing good spaces that have an impact, we always prefer to save the world. You know, and uh, but we never do. I mean. <laughs>